Which is better for to-do list and managing tasks, Notion or Microsoft To-Do? Both apps have many features which can be great for to-do lists with unique differences in its usability, customization, sharing features, and more. In this video, we wanted to compare and contrast both apps so that you can ultimately decide which app is most suitable for your needs. If you find this helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. Let's start by comparing the general layout of both Notion and Microsoft To Do. So here we're going to be using our advanced to-do list Notion template as an example so that you can take a look at what a to-do list could look like in Notion. So as you can see, we have categories here, our to-do list here, and then we also have a monthly check-in where you can add your goals for the month and some buttons for adding new tasks as well as different navigation areas. So you can go to your categories, your to-do list, and your monthly check-in and easily add a new task. So here is how Microsoft To Do looks like. So as you can see, it's a very simple layout. You can see your day here and all the tasks you need to do. And there's a really handy left-hand sidebar. You can see your important tasks, planned tasks, assigned to me, flagged in email, tasks, and then a bunch of different to-do lists that you can create on the left-hand side as well. So the layout is quite simple and easy to use. If we go back to Notion, let's go ahead and try adding a task. So in order to add a task to this advanced to-do list, we do have to add it as a database item. So we're just going to click add new task. And let's say that we have a new task to make a doctor's appointment. And we have the choice to add a due date, priority, duration, type, categories, link, and completion is calculated here based on the subtasks like this. And here we'll be able to see it here in to do and as well as see it in our task calendar. In Microsoft to do, if we wanted to do the same thing, we could simply be in my day and create a task here that would be to make a doctor's appointment. And if we click enter, it's going to go in like this. Then if we click it open, we can add steps to it for subtasks and we can also add a due date. So let's say it's tomorrow as well as choose other options. So with the to-do list, it can be really important to automate and have recurring tasks. And in Notion, it is a bit weaker in comparison to other apps because you can't have a truly recurring task system. So the task is actually going to show up on the day that you set it to. So let's take an example where we want to add a recurring task where it's going to show up every week to take out the garbage. So if we click here and then we actually have to duplicate this template like this and we're going to call this take out garbage and this is going to be a high priority task when it does come around and the category is going to be house chores so let's go back and now what we can do is set it to recurring by clicking this and repeat and turning it on to weekly and then choosing what day of the week you want it to show up. So that would be how you would set a recurring task in Notion. So it is quite complicated. So let's say that we want to do the same thing in Microsoft To Do. We can add a task here that is to take out the garbage every week and click enter. And then we could click on this and add repeat to be weekly. And it's going to set the first day as today unless you set it otherwise. And what's interesting is that Instead, like in Notion, where it just shows up on the day that it's set to, if you complete this task, then it's going to go to planned. And then inside later, you'll see the next date show up. So every time you complete the task, which is recurring, it's going to show the next task deadline so that you can keep track of your task that way, which is very nice as well. Next, let's take a look at subtasks, which can be really important for task management. So if we go to our to-do list here, we can actually add a subtask by clicking a button inside. So if we click add subtask for make a doctor's appointment, maybe we actually have to find the phone number first. And then if we click out, we'll see now that there is a subtask inside here to find the phone number. 
and this is not built in but it is inside of our template so in that sense it kind of had to be manually created for this to be possible but let's go ahead and check how it is in microsoft to do so in microsoft to do it's very intuitive so let's say we have the same task here and we're going to add a step we can just simply click inside and type find phone number and enter so then you can see how many out of the subtasks you've completed inside of here which is also a really nice feature so next let's take a look at the sharing feature so with notion there is a share button where you can share this entire page with someone and they're able to see things and you can also assign tasks so we don't have it here but you could put a new property and have a person so that you can actually assign it to people who are in your notion workspace so this can be useful if you're using it with multiple people the sharing is quite limited in the sense that you have to share your whole to-do list however with microsoft to do you are able to share only certain lists so let's say that we're going to create a new list here which is with a client meeting and you made a to-do list for your client and you had some tasks for them like read document covered during the session and just laid out next steps inside of here and then you could actually click this button to share the list and you can invite them to this to-do list so it's quite nice that you can separate your personal to-do list with shared to-do list while still being able to see your shared to-do list in your entire space for example in the my day section so this can be also a really nice way to use microsoft to do the next thing we wanted to cover is importance when you have a task manager and to-do list system oftentimes you'll want to be able to see your tasks by importance and here we have built in for example this priority so that you can mark it from one to four exclamation points depending on how important it, this is however with microsoft to do you're only able to simply mark it like this with the star to show that it's important and then you can sort them by importance but this can be a little limiting because then you can't have the smaller importances so if something is maybe two exclamation points as opposed to four so you can't do that kind of micromanaging with microsoft to do but for very simple to-do list and just day-to-day -day use this could be just sufficient that you're able to start them like this the next element is adding notes and files so in our advanced to-do list we did add a section for adding a link so you can simply add a link here if you want to add a file you can either add it directly inside here or you can add a property which is a file and files in media like this in microsoft to do it's already built in so if you wanted to add a file you can do so through here or even add some notes so the next thing is due dates and filtering so if we want to go and see things by due date we have built in this filter by due date so you can see the to-do list this way and you can also see it inside of a calendar like this so that you can easily check on your tasks Microsoft to do on the other hand has this section called planned and here it's quite useful because it's already built in you can see this week later tomorrow today overdue and all planned so this should be sufficient if you're just keeping a basic to-do list although it doesn't have as many features as a notion in order to see your dates so for example this can't be seen on a calendar through here so that could be a little bit limiting but overall this seems very sufficient if you're just looking for your tasks next we wanted to talk about customizability so notion has a really great customization option for example you can change the icon to anything you want including a custom image you can also change the cover photo to anything you want and many things are very moldable so here we also have categories then we also have a to-do list in kanban view and then we also added a task calendar so as you can see all of this is customized and We've basically built this so that there is many features in this to-do list 
Microsoft to do on the other hand is built very solidly in the sense that you can't do too much customization but it's built in a way that it should be usable immediately out of the box you can kind of click here change the theme a bit but these are your only options and you can add an icon for example to your list like this but overall the customization is quite limited compared to notion next let's talk about some unique features for each so inside of notion what's very unique is that you can add unlimited properties to your task so if this is a task database you can just click plus add a property and add any of these options here including formulas so it can be as complicated or as simple as you wish in terms of how you keep track of your tasks some unique features of Microsoft to do is this my day where you can kind of see a to do list of your whole day by moving things from different sections. So let's say that we have this task and we wanted to add it to my day. You can just click here and it's going to show up in your day like this. And it also has this suggestions here, which is really useful. So it just shows all the tasks that you've put here that could be added to your day. And this can be a nice way to craft your to-do list if you're planning in the morning. Another unique feature is that you can easily add folders. So if you wanted to combine your multiple to-do list into one, you can just simply drag it. And then you have a untitled group here. And you can actually rename this. So this could be work. So this is a really cool way to have your to-do list inside different folders. And then we just wanted to talk about ease of use. So as you can see, Notion can be quite complicated. There's so many areas and we would really recommend you to watch our tutorial video before using this template, for example. And if you were starting from complete scratch, it would look something like this. So you really wouldn't have anywhere to start from unless you use a template. You could create something quite simple, however, if you simply wanted to manually type slash checkbox and make a to-do list this way. So it's really easy to get started, but if you wanted to have some advanced features, you would either need a template or to really build it from scratch and think it through how you want it and maybe add some databases. Microsoft to do on the other hand is built very solidly as a to-do list app. So it really excels in being a simple to-do list. So you can just simply type a task. It's going to end up here. You can see only a few things here like important, planned, assigned to me and tasks. So everything is very streamlined and in some ways very minimalist, which is really useful if you're trying to get focused and complete your tasks. In conclusion, we feel that both Notion and Microsoft To Do have a lot to offer, but it can cater to different needs. If you're looking for an all-in-one tool where you can make your to-do list as complicated or as simple as you need, along with being able to use the app for other things like habit tracking, note-taking, and planning, you might want to consider Notion. If you're looking for a solid and easy to use to-do list app, Microsoft To Do can be a great option. We'll leave the links to both in the description below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let us know your thoughts on Notion versus Microsoft To Do and which have you tried. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let us know and we hope to see you in the next video.